Jonesies, this is Job Wise Jones coming right back at you. This is a more serious video because I am getting a lot of emails from medical assistants out there who are still unemployed. I'm getting things like, I still have to work at this restaurant or do Uber because I can't find a job as a medical assistant. I get these emails a lot and so I really want to help you guys out with this about being unemployed even though you already passed your medical assistant schooling, uh, some of you already passed your certification test, and yet you still can't find work. So I think we gotta look at a couple things here. Um, this is really for John. John, we actually called, we talked for a while on the phone. He's very exasperated. Um, I, I did ask, could I talk about him on the phone here, on, on the video here? He said, yes, no problem at all. So I start out with the beginning, like I always do. When people go to medical assisting school, they, they're so excited, you know, they're so overwhelmed by getting to go to school, uh, maybe be done in nine months, go out there, have a job, because the school's pushing these uh, sometimes grandiose ideas of what it's gonna be like when they find employment. But the problem is finding employment and when you find employment are two different things, right? You get all the education, all the schooling, all that good stuff, whatever. But if, if you're not prepared via the school, if you're not prepared by yourself to find a job, well, you just don't find a job. So let's go through a couple things here to help you out a little more. So the first thing you want to see is in with your school, is it in a big city or a little city? And yes, that matters because medical assistant school is a very... Um, focused trade, right? It's medical assisting. So like a bachelor degree, we, we go to college, get a four year degree. Um, my degree, my bachelor degree is in urban studies, uh, city planning, right? So that's a very broad spectrum because for four years, you're learning a lot about a little. So you kind of cover many things. Well, in trade schools and tech schools, you're learning one thing and one thing only. When I was in Arizona, some guys were going through this Harley uh, engine uh, mechanic school, very focused. Same thing with medical assisting school, very focused. So if you're in a small city, this is why it matters. If you're in a small city and you graduate from a small city from medical assisting, you have to look at saturation. That means how many people with medical assisting uh, certificates are graduating from that from that uh, from that school in that small city because if I'm pushing out 30 or 40 people every six months from my MA school, that's a lot of competition in a small city, and of course some people will not be employed, no matter how talented they are, no matter how high their GPAs were, no matter how great they were. It's a small city. It's like putting 50 people on a 10 person life raft, uh, uh, raft. It just isn't going to be able to hold that kind of capacity. And of course, some folks would not be able to get on the raft. It's just too many. The same scenario is parallel to a MA school in a small city. You're just pushing out too many MAs into the area. Now that's a problem already. My friend who called me, he is in a small city. He says about 30 people, it's weird, for every nine months are getting pushed out into the system in a very small city. As I told John about that, he kind of understands a little bit now that he says, yeah, there's a lot of MAs coming out in the same area. Yes, there are. So for that, a strategy for that, you guys, you have to look at cities beyond your city for employment as a medical assistant. Maybe look at a bigger city, understand, to help you out. Number two is this, John's school was not accredited. It has, it had the beautiful, we're approved by this and we're, and, we're, and we're recommended by this, but he found out too late, meaning post-graduation, his school was not accredited. You guys, you have to make sure that school you go to is a credited school, understand? When I pursue my, edu my education uh, uh, for my BA degree, it's a state school. State schools have to be accredited. So same way there, he realized that too. So two strikes already. Small city, 
in a not accredited school. Number three, he didn't find this out either. How many medical assistants are out there in the field that come from your school? Meaning, like my college, University of Washington, <laughs> they have like a 90% uh, hire rate, very high rate of hire, understand? All across the spectrum, of course, okay? So the same question, you guys, listen carefully. You must ask your MA school the same question. How many of us graduates are getting employed once we graduate school? That's so important and nobody ever asks these questions. It's so important, okay? Okay, say you are MA in big school. Say your school is accredited. You're asking all the right questions, all right? So the school's great, location's great. That's all great. But then, so we have to look at, why am I still not being hired? I see this a lot. People are not preparing their social sites for their interviews. Meaning, your social sites have a lot of bad words on there. Pe people naked are doing crazy things, saying things that are sexist, racist, saying things that are just crazy politically things that no employer in the world is going to want to hire because it appears maybe not true right but the appearance is that you with these crazy flags on your website are talking bad about minorities or <coughs> talking bad about men talking bad about women or whatever talking bad about people of other uh, sexual orientations you have that stuff plastered on your website right now HR believe it or not does look at stuff like that doesn't mean they're gonna tell you but they definitely do scan those things your LinkedIn your Twitter feeds your Facebook TikToks, all that stuff so sometimes it's not the school sometimes it's you that is causing you to not be employed understand those are things you have to look at within yourself because those are huge issues. Also within that same social stream, your attitude. Say you don't have anything bad on your, on your social sites, but your attitude is just crappy. You know, you have a bad attitude on your, on your social sites. You're sitting there looking all hard or, or, or looking, looking crazy or whatever it is that would turn off an employer you are pushing out that image, trying to show this, this image on social media, but it's just hurting you because this thing you're trying to push out there to the, for the world to see is such a negative thing that when they start their soft research on you, they're saying, no, we really don't want this person coming into our clinic because they're gonna cause A, B, C, or D. I understand in this world right now, in America, the 21st century, People and businesses are trying to avoid being in court for stupid things. So if they screen you already <laughs> on your social site for derogatory behavior, they know already they're not going to want you in their clinic because you are going to bring along problems that they're not going to want to deal with and nobody's going to want to deal with. So your school can be great, but the problem could be you your bad attitude. Also too, I've seen attitudes in interviews with MAs who were interviewing who come there with uh, this is my type position, I deserve this because this, 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 this should be mine because this, 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 as if they're entitled to something they haven't earned. An interview is a competitive process. You don't get it because you passed through school. You don't get it because you're a great person. You get it because you have the qualifications that make it so that you are a great pick for that job. But nobody out there deserves a job. You know, I've said this many times to some of my folks who call me and I had these conversations and I had to tell them, nobody deserves a job, you have to earn a job. That's how it works. It doesn't matter if you're the best engineer in the world, doesn't matter if you're the best whatever in the world. You have to still earn that through the process of the interview process. Understand? I get about two resumes a week 
from medical assistance out there. And so it's about eight a month. Of those eight a month I get, two or three are always, they just look terrible. They're cookie cutter reproductions from the school and I can tell right from the start because it's the same small objective line. And then it's always what the schools have these little pre-cut, pre-posted, pre-cookie cutter type, fills, uh, type deals, right? Listen, you guys, <laughs> AI, artificial intelligence will not pick up on those cookie cutter resumes from your school because of this one reason. They are not tailored to the job you're applying for. Understand? It's like if you're a lady who's looking for a man to date, you want a guy who's uh, six feet tall with, uh, with, with, with a big old F afro and wears blue shirts. But all they keep throwing your way is a guy who's four foot three, uh, long straight hair, and wears green shirts. You're never going to go out with that guy because it's not what you want. Same thing with artificial intelligence. Those artificial intelligence <laughs> programs are screening you. It's not me. It's not, it's not a hiring manager screening your resume first. It's always artificial intelligence. So a lot of times people call me saying, I didn't get this job. They didn't even call me. They didn't even send me a res, uh, an, uh, an, uh, an email. It's because your resumes are not tailored to the job. You're not taking out the description of the job and put it into your resume. You gotta pick up those, those descriptions and put it into your resume. You cannot send this generic school cookie cutter resume. Understand? Yes, the schools are fulfilling their, their, their promises to you by saying, yes, we'll give you resume help, but you're one of 4,000. You're just a number, that's all, that's all you are. And so you have to understand that. And so you have to make your resume very specific to the MA job out there that's advertising it. That's very important. And the last thing, you guys, why some of you are not getting jobs is because of this. I interview people all the time and maybe 40% are prepared, but 60% are not prepared. They're not coming there with the right attitude as far as understanding what they're applying to, who they're applying for, how long that business has been, how long that center has been there, you know, um, what the specialty is. They don't know the basic questions because they're not doing the homework pre-interview. Some of them aren't even wearing the right clothes. I got people on Zoom wearing t-shirts, wearing tank tops, and crazy stuff like that. You cannot do that at your interview. If it's a Zoom interview or an in-person interview, you have to dress appropriately because it's an interview, understand? So, you have to be prepared for those questions at the interview that even you may not be expecting, but be prepared to answer them. You also have to know your resume. People sometimes have their resumes done by somebody else, but they don't even know what's on their own resume because I'm gonna ask you, can you, per your resume, tell me how you are qualified for this job? Now, if somebody else is doing your resume, that's fine, but if you're not looking at the new information on your resume and you get called in for an interview and you don't know what's on your resume, that's a huge problem, okay? You have to know your resume. I'm not gonna know it. I have 15 or 20 minutes with you tops, but you're with you 24 hours a day, so you should know what's on your resume. So you guys, that's some of the real deal behind some MAs not getting employment not getting that dream job. <clears throat> now you guys also too, sometimes it truly isn't your fault. Sometimes it's just the sheer volume of qualified people like yourself who are applying, who just don't make the cut for that one particular job. 
but even you guys just got to keep going out there and hustling and trying to find your medical assistant job okay so you can't give up so John uh, John James <laughs> John James Mary uh, Julie and Sabrina you guys keep looking okay don't stop Sabrina uh, we'll talk next week about your resume you guys keep working at it but understand that's the hard talk the straight talk about why some of you are not finding employment as medical assistants I know some of the information hurts to hear but I'm not here to hurt you I'm here to help you okay you guys can always reach out to me via email you can uh, you can you send me a, a, a comments a likes whatever you want to do it's fine let me know how you're doing out there uh, please subscribe to this channel this channel is designed for you it's built to help you succeed and I want you to succeed all right so subscribe to me send me an email if you have any questions and keep on watching i have many videos to help you guys out okay you take care bye bye